Today we are going to be going through a glute and lower body session. So I actually just went through a full recap and update on how things are going within my training on the podcast and it launched this Monday. So I will leave that in the description box below for you to give it a listen. It also goes through Alex's half marathon training. So if you have been following along with that, that's normally the video that's in place here, but I wanted to take you through a leg session with me. I actually don't feel super great. I'm not feeling 100 today. I have had some pain with my ovulation that I am currently on and then I haven't been having as good of sleep and then my stress has been higher and with my stress being higher and my sleep not being good that's also going to affect how my ovulation is and vice versa if my stress being high that's going to affect my sleep. My sleep being poor can increase my stress so I've tried to be very cognizant of that. I've taken a few extra rest days here and there just to be able to to make sure that I'm not overdoing it. And I'm really having a big emphasis on making sure that I'm eating enough, even though I haven't had the biggest appetite, just any way that I can get some quick calories in. So when it comes to training today, I was like, you know what? We're just gonna boss up. I got one of my favorite shirts on from a friend's company. So shout out to Scott, his company Uphill Battle. So if you already have a PD band tee, maybe you've already collected them all, you wanna get another band tee, then I would recommend the Uphill Battle ones but we're just going to go ahead get into the session and I'll talk to you during it. First up we do have a glute max kickback. A few weeks ago I was having some issues when I was recording myself I was seeing that my hips were kind of dumping over a little bit. I sent the video to my coach who also happens to be my hot husband. Then I also sent it over to a neuromuscular therapist that I've been working with and his name is James. And we found I was really good at external rotation but internal rotation I really struggled with. And I also was having issues getting to full hip extension. So I've been working on some different exercises with James and doing a few different things to ensure that I can feel my best when I am training. So what I found with some of my training in general and especially leg movements is that I wasn't able to push through my whole entire foot. I was having issues feeling the inside of my foot. When I did certain movements, I had a lot of time, hard time with balance because it felt like I was kind of on a skate or I was just pressing towards that outside edge of my foot. And to be able to get the best engagement for glutes, which is my goal right now, and of course function, then it was something where I needed to be able to feel my whole foot up against against the ground. So with these shoes, these Vivo shoes, I absolutely love these for leg training because they have this wider toe box and you also want to be able to spread out your toes. So you Converse wearers over there, I got a little bit of a bone to pick because of how narrow the toe box is. But with this, this is a barefoot shoe. But with someone with high arches, a barefoot shoe can cause a few issues because it's going to act like your foot so you don't really have anything to press into with that arch. So you'll see me as I'm doing some different movements. I have a sock that I shove under my arch and so some of my training I do with just my socks on some of it I'm wearing the shoes um, but using that sock to be able to press press in for my high arch and another thing I'm working on is taking this to help kind of separate or stretch out where my heel bone is just to be able to put me in a place where I can flatten that foot a little bit more this honestly hurts like a mother. I will say I ended up getting pretty good sleep last night and I woke up feeling a lot better today. And I think that's important to note because we really teach clients and just anyone in general that you wanna pay attention to your recoverability. And if you push yourself too much, then you can't recover. And that makes a lot of your hard work null and void. So with that, I probably wouldn't have trained today. And I even messaged Miguel last night because I didn't feel good. And I knew if I didn't get a good night of sleep, Sleep, that I wouldn't be in a good spot to train, but got a good night of sleep, got some good calories in me this morning. It's actually my brother's birthday today, so my sister got him Chick-fil-A for breakfast, which means she dropped off Chick-fil-A to us for breakfast. So I had some pancakes and I also had chicken minis because one cannot pass up on chicken minis when they are offered to you. I'm just starting off with a lighter weight than my actual first set and being able to do some warm-up sets here, being able to make sure that everything is lined up within my setup. 
making sure that everything feels right. I'm able to engage my core and be able to keep my center of gravity and making sure specifically that I can get to that full hip extension. And I have my handy dandy sock folded to put under, put under my arch here to really make sure I can press into that whole foot. This is gonna be my first set, and I'm doing it with 70 pounds here. This is where I did my first set last time, and the reason that I'm starting at 70, I did make a note that I could have started at 75 or 80, is just because my sleep and recovery hasn't been as good. So I'd rather start at this 70 and then be able to move up a little bit higher than last time, than put myself in a position where I just try to overdo it too quickly. But I'm still challenging myself because I want this RPE to be around a seven or eight. This is where a logbook comes in so handy so that I'm not wasting time or energy trying to figure out what weight I should use. In that instance, I knew I would be trying to figure things out a little bit just due to recovery, but being able to look at my last session, what my notes were for it, not just that I did that weight, but how hard was that weight and how many reps did I do that weight for? So this is also a descending neuro, especially at the beginning of this phase, so very strength-based. So I'm trying to challenge that strength and there's some rest period. And especially if you're doing unilateral work, you wanna rest in between the legs because you have to think about the exhaustion and fatigue that's piling up. And if you just go from straight from your left leg into your right leg, then it's likely that second leg isn't gonna be as strong. That's actually also a reason that I normally start with my non-dominant leg because I'm more likely to just be in a place where the energy is better for the first one. And I wanna prioritize that non-dominant leg or arm. So I'm definitely gonna make a note of the RP for that, but also make a note to start heavier next time I do this session, because I'll definitely be able to. Last week, my second set was at 80 pounds, and this week I'm gonna go ahead and go up to 90 because I feel like my RP was a little bit low for that first set, and due to saying I could have already gone up, then I'm gonna make the educated guess that 90 is gonna be the right call here.
I feel like that was pretty close to where I needed that RPE to go. And if I do go up for the first set next time, then I might stay at that weight for the second one because then that's going to be an accumulation of volume. I think oftentimes people try to think, oh, I need to progress, I need to progress, I need to progress. But let's say that you do three sets at 30 one week for something. And then the next week you do all three sets at 35. That's a lot of accumulated volume that you've added in, even with it just being a five pound small increase in your head. Whereas sometimes if I just have one, so if I did three sets of 30 one week, and then I do two sets of 30 and one set of 35, I'll make note of it of like increase in volume, like great job with improving here. Instead of just thinking, oh, that was only five pounds for one set, you're, you're making those steps each and every week the best way you can. Oh my gosh, for those cooking classes, there's one for learning how to make croissants. I think I'm about to do that one. I'll bug around with some croissants. One more set. I like unilateral work, but when you have multiple movements that are unilateral in a session, I like this feels so fucking long. Aiming to hit failure or near failure on this set. So I went up 20 pounds from the last set, and it's gonna be the same amount of reps as the last set at five reps here. I ended up getting six reps there instead of just the five. Part of that was because about two of those reps, I felt like I wasn't getting the full engagement and I was just kind of going through the motion. And so then I kind of locked in, made sure my core and my center of gravity were connected. I was like, I'm gonna crank out two more and get this done. So I'm gonna try to do the same amount on this other leg, but again, did my weaker leg first or my non-dominant leg. 
That's all she wrote. So finished up the kickback and now we're going into the leg press and it's the same rep scheme that was for the glute max kickback. And so it's four sets and it goes seven, seven, five, five. So again, it's decreasing. So we want the weight to increase as we go along. The glute max kickback, while it does go through the mid range, it is biasing more of that shortened range. And the leg press is going to be more of that lengthened range of the glute. And it's also great because that movement, I'm not having as much stability. I'm having to really stabilize with my core. So that's why it's great that it's the first movement. We're getting into this, while I still need to brace my core and I still need to stabilize myself as a whole, there's so much more stability in a machine. So especially if you're going for output, you really want to pay attention to the order of the exercises to make sure that you're not putting yourself in an advantageous position. <sighs> That was right where I wanted it at the eight RPE for the seven reps. So I'm actually gonna keep the same weight. Not that you want to try to be like, oh, I can't lift heavier because I have other exercises after this. But because I've done this session multiple times before, then I do know that by the time I get to the next exercise, if I completely gas myself on this one, then I'm toast for the rest of the time. <sighs> Since this is a strength-based phase, my rest periods are a little bit longer and I find myself trying to rush through them and that's going to then counteract again what the goal of the stimulus is because I want that extra rest to be able to lift as heavy as possible. It's always great to have a nice little stopwatch. I just prefer it unless I'm like tracking my training in an app that has a, a rest period timer, like, you know, the PDTC does, but it's nice so that I just don't get distracted by my phone. Sadly, I think I could add a little bit of weight. And I say sadly, just because sometimes you're like, that was hard. I don't want to go up, but don't be a little bitch. No soft reps. Bro, Woody is massive now. He's ginormous. Who knows? He's a crazy boy. He's like Tucker, but just huge. And Tucker's already huge. to the drop lunge. 
All right, we're doing some drop lunges here, and these are at three sets of six. So again, I'm starting with my non-dominant leg with this left leg here, and we're just gonna bang it out. After the first leg, I was like, I think I can go up to 35s. I was just using 25s. After the second leg, I'm thinking we go to 30s. Last set, best set. We did go up to 35s for this one because I do now feel like I can do one set with the 35s. I really don't know if I could have done two sets with the 35s.
My sister's been training in here more, like a day or so a week. It's like she just got to the point where she's like, I just got to the point a year in where like exercise makes me feel good. Like I get excited to go do it versus like the whole first year I was kind of like just making myself do it. <sighs> So the first part of the session, like I mentioned, is more strength-based, but the second part of the session is more metabolic-based. So with that, I have shorter rest periods. So that was a set of 12, and I have two more sets of 12. And if I had a longer rest period, I'd probably keep that weight on. But since I don't have a longer rest period, then again, I need to pay attention to what the goal of the stimulus is so I can gauge the weight correctly from there. So that first rep felt way too easy and I was like, should have left the weight on. But as I progressed, got quite a bit more difficult there. Why is this pausing me? I think like the sweat on my arm is, I don't know what it's doing. Ah. 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 
This is the last movement and it is a 45 degree hip extension. And just like the leg extension, this is more metabolic based. So I have three sets of 12 here and that shorter rest period. Uh, so I'm not using load today, especially after every movement I did. My glutes are pretty fatigued and body weight is plenty here, especially if you really have this movement down, you'll see that body weight can be very sufficient to get the job done. That wraps up this leg session, specifically very big bias on glutes because I am going through the glute program, the PD glute program. This is my second time going through it. And like I said at the beginning, I'm on my third week um, of the 12 weeks. So I will likely be doing a few more videos, being able to show the progress along the way. And I'll be doing a lot of updates and I have a highlight on Instagram to show the progress. And we also have an FAQ um, on my highlights as well. So you can go check that out. But thanks for training with me today.